Every single day, the Fed pumps more and more money into the financial system. This has been the case since the repo crisis unfolded, and it has evolved into QE4 and the unofficial beginning of the next round of monetary easing. Right now, the US consumer is the most important factor for the US economy without a doubt. However, with debt at its absolute peak and many businesses concerned about future risks, how will the government incentivize further debt creation? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Of course, today people don't have wealth, they have debt, and we have witnessed consumers being in the most debt they have ever been in in history. Whether we look at the tuitions, whether we look at the credit cards, and whether we look at the personal loans, and of course, we see auto loans as well. I've documented all of this before on the channel. I'm sure if you're a subscriber here, you have seen me talk about it and update you on a regular basis. Today, I want to get into two important factors. First, First, we're going to look at what the central banks are doing, namely the Federal Reserve. I'm also going to briefly talk about China Central Bank and the US consumer or consumers in general. And I asked the question, can the Fed bail out US consumers? Let's begin. As always, you can see what's happening with the repos, reverse repos. Every single day, the Federal Reserve goes into the system, pumps money in there. This liquidity is supposed to help keep the financial system healthy. But underlying all of this mess is clearly a very sick patient. And trying to pump it up, trying to stimulate it, is not going to fix the underlying root cause. Here you can see the Fed adding $92.7 billion to the markets. They give you the breakdown in this Wall Street Journal article. But all I wanted to note was that this is happening on a daily basis and it's already old news. If you try to see what these articles say, what the analysts are talking about, and what those in the financial industry have been saying as a result of all this business, quite frankly, they don't care anymore. According to them, the Federal Reserve has taken care of the issue, and if anything comes up in the near future, they're going to go even further. This tells you that not only do the central banks have control of the markets, but specifically that they are the markets. This article out of Reuters is talking about China Central Bank, the PBOC. Financial markets are highly sensitive to global trade situations and rising uncertainties in global liquidity. Liquidity. And of course, this is a topic that we've been covering even before the repo crisis. I have always said that liquidity is everything. Well, that statement here is according to the PBOC themselves in its annual financial stability report, adding that it will step up real-time supervision on stock, bond, foreign exchange markets to prevent cross-sector risk contamination. They are already intervening in every market, top to bottom. They are creating the biggest public works projects in the history of the world in China, and that's not enough. They're going to take it to the next step. Bond defaults may continue, so authorities must prevent the risks of such defaults from triggering systemic risks, it said, while penalties on regulatory violations in the securities market would be increased. They talk about debt, they talk about leverage, they talk about how they are going to maintain a proactive fiscal policy and a prudent monetary policy. Essentially, they're going to be printing more money, they're going to create more stimulus packages, they're going to reduce the reserve requirement ratio and they're going to ensure that this growth can be maximized. If you look at what has happened, another bank in China has failed. This time around, it's a small bank, but I think we're at five or even six right now at this point. I lost count. But there's some clear problems that are present in the financial system today. Of course, we see banks going under all the time. It happens. But if we don't take it as an isolated event, if we start to put everything together, it makes a lot more sense. Of course, what we have seen in recent years is that there's these unicorn companies. Their valuations are absolutely ridiculous. We've watched, in this case here, Silicon Valley adjust to new reality as $100 billion evaporates. They're talking about the likes of WeWork, Uber, and other unicorns prompts soul-searching among investors. They give you some examples in here. I'm not going to cover all the details of it, but I'm just bringing this up because it's going to lead into the next point. 
point. What about the consumers? What's happening with the average investor? Are they starting to switch? Are they starting to change? Are they looking at alternative investments? What is going on right now as we head into 2020? I want to make it very clear that we have seen the most massive outflows from equities in 2019 that we have seen in a very long time. Now that might change before the end of the year because now what has happened, the risk on mentality is back. We've seen the introduction of QE4, other central banks going out there and pumping their systems up as well. So we'll see how these last few weeks go but ultimately at this point in the year we have watched the biggest outflows from equities in a long time and I know it's hard to believe but that's the data I've showed you that before and I'm hoping that I'll be able to cover that in tomorrow's video so stay tuned for that so the second part of the video here the U.S. consumer confidence falls for the fourth consecutive month now this fluctuates all the time when you see it on the charts it's up it's down but here you can see four consecutive months now this could be a lot of people waiting for q4 holding off on some purchases to try to get some deals and so on it's not just one or two months it's the fourth in a row so we'll see the data as it comes through in the new year and of course i will bring that to you to give you an update on what happened through this holiday season of course, people don't buy necessarily with cash or with money they actually have. People go further and further into debt. And we talk about the U.S. consumer. Really what we're talking about is U.S. debt because people consume at the absolute maximum. When you have people that are excessively in debt on all levels, I mean, just look at what people spend money on. It is absurd. Now, of course, on top of the frivolous spending, there are things like healthcare and other expenses that have been adding up quite a bit over the last few years. Overspending right now, if you can believe it or not, 48 million Americans are still paying off credit card debt from last holiday season. Now I'm going to show you some more details about that in a second, but this right here just shows you what people are doing. They are spending money which stimulates the economy however it's not money that they have it's simply a matter of fact that they go further and further into debt higher income americans are reining in their spending for a myriad of reasons including volatile stock market shoppers fatigue the new tax law and modest wage increases the trend is noteworthy because the top 10 percent of households by income make up nearly half of all consumption there are more details in here as well but just wanted to show you that people at all levels seem to be worried and we look at this even in the businesses too they're holding off on their spending we've got companies like berkshire hathaway and so many others that are holding on to record piles of cash so clearly something's going on Interconnected with that, this chart here, consumer confidence just showing you year over year declining again. If this persists right through into the new year, we clearly have a very big problem. Quick update on the store closures. Right now, we are at 9,083. I don't think that they're going to get to the 12,000 that they initially had thought would happen, but it doesn't matter. It's already a record level. And for those who want to know, store openings are at 4,059. Not much, including unease about the nation's economy, stands in the way of holiday shopping in the U.S. Over 223 million Americans plan to purchase gifts this holiday season, spending an estimated $184 billion, even as many believe that we're bound for a recession. So around this time, we generally get a massive pickup in consumer spending of course i'll give the details there and a lot of people don't even care how far they are into debt clearly because they're still paying it off one year later world trade growth is moving lower this gives you an idea of the global freight traffic where it peaked out here is what looks like to me around 2017 into 2018 and it has been declining ever since. I've shown you this with the PMIs, I've shown you this with many other statistics that add up. 
This is from the CPB out of Netherlands. World trade volume decreased 1.3% month on month. This is another one that is volatile. It's moving up and down all the time. However, just wanted to give you an update on this. I showed you it just recently. The problems that we are seeing are not just in the United States or between the US and China. Of course, this is all around the world. So I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you hit the like button, you are supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want to make money online, if you want to learn about passive income, then I created a course that's completely free to teach you step by step how to sell on Amazon. It's called the Amazon GPS and you can check it out at the Amazon GPS.com. If you want a simplified version of the financial education that you were supposed to get in school, but it was intentionally left out, these two books have everything you need. Once you read these two books, you got the foundation, the history, the asset classes, making money and everything in between. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. Solutions, solutions, solutions. What can we do about it? Well, I created this video and an entire playlist of videos, which you might not have seen before. Click on the link and I'll see you there.